Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. That's... Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. Well, the Beatles were the best band around because they were the best at everything. There was something deeper that was going on always in a Beatle lyric. They loved America. Well, you know, this massive land. We're now at the 50th anniversary of what I call the 10 days that shook the world, that certainly shook America. People are always curious, uh, Ed Sullivan Show is what broke the Beatles. No, it isn't, because if that was the case, how come there was nearly 10,000 fans at JFK a couple of days before the show, when they arrived in America? And how come 73 million people were watching for an unknown band? No, what had happened was that the Beatles had started to have their success a little earlier. It was in late November 1963 that there was a TV news report that came to America that was going to be shown, unfortunately, that evening was Friday, November 22nd, which is the day JFK was shot. So, and uh, after that tragedy, they took the film clip of the Beatles and put it on the, on, on the shelf. Thought, well, we can't show this now. 18 days later, Walter Cronkite said, he was trying to cheer up the American nation after this tragedy. He said, hang on, didn't we have something light-hearted we can show to people? Yeah, we got that clip of those weird guys from England with the funny hair. Why don't we put that on? It'll cheer people up. And that is why three weeks later when they land here, there's already Beatlemania. Pandemonium paid a visit to the USA. Four shaggy minstrels, the Beatles, who look and speak like this. Telling them, no, first of all, we're bringing out the Stamp Out Detroit campaign. Which, you know, what about the Stamp Out Detroit? What about it? How big are they? The first invasion of the Beatles into America was something extraordinary. They didn't know what the reaction was going to be. And now we know what that reaction was. Extraordinary. It was as if the Beatles had stepped off a spaceship from another planet and arrived in America. Same thing happened to me in the following year when I was invited on the Ed Sullivan Show. The fans here couldn't understand where we'd come from. It was extraordinary. America then was incredibly far away. Um, nowadays, you know, people in England go for a week's holiday in Florida and think nothing of it. It's cheap, it's quick, you know. Then, going to America was a really big deal. If you met someone who'd been to America, it was exciting. And I know precisely how excited they must have been when they first knew they were going to get to go to New York, because we had the same feelings. When War Without Love went to number one, the most important thing about that news was we get to go to America. And then, of course, to go and be greeted by screaming girls trying to tear your clothes off it improves the, the experience immensely. It's, it's, I recommend it highly. We just couldn't believe the way America just basically, we would say, opened their arms to them. You know, I mean, we were made up. Um, well, I, I just couldn't believe the response. Bruised drums and hurt guitars incited a frenzied loyalty. The Beatles at that time broke all the rules. Normally, if you were on TV, you, you smiled just to the camera and you had a little plasticky showbiz smile, and that was all you did. The Beatles changed all that. They were just giddy with excitement, and you see them looking at each other. Who oh, can you believe it? We're in America. Wow. And, and sm natural smiles, not artificial Vega smiles. And that authenticity is what communicated itself to the people at home. The kids at home say, hey, this isn't just like, you know, standard issue pop star. These guys are really happy. They're like us. It's a dangerous job and you're being chased by obsessive fans. It looks funny on film, but it was quite a difficult thing to deal with because you've got to imagine that 300 fans chasing you down a street have scissors in their hands. And it's not only you that are in danger because they're looking for the lock of the hair, they're in danger because if one of them falls, the others are going to get hurt. I was talking away. <laughs> there you go. When I looked around, there was about 400 people just smiling. Well, the Beatles were the best band around because they were the best at everything. I mean, they, they wrote the best songs by far. They, they sang incredibly well. They, they were a great band. You know, they played really well together. Paul and Ringo were a great rhythm section. And, and they also had, of course, the whole charm and looks and, and a particular look they'd invented. You know, there was, it was one of those perfect storm situations where everything about the band was right. It was Brian Epstein who discovered them in late 1961. At the time he came across the Beatles, they'd been, John, Paul and George, had been together for five years. Brian Epstein had this vision that they were going to be huge. And he, he'd had no experience of managing anybody. But he just saw them and he said, these guys are special. He even said, they're going to be bigger than Elvis. 
Ho, ho, that sounded like a crazy brag. The guys from the north of England, some provincial hick town, they're gonna be bigger than Elvis Presley, the biggest star in the world? Are you crazy? No, he wasn't crazy. He had vision. Brian Epstein is the undersung hero of the Beatles. The Beatles came, they conquered in America, and they've left a legacy. And if you're celebrating 50 years of the first time they arrived here, what you are celebrating is the Beatles. It's the best thing, I think, that happened to this planet ever.